Elas Ilcor, Lurus Companion, C E D H. Could it be more powerful if Lurus wasn't the companion? Maybe it could, but you know what? Sometimes you notice a problem, at least I do, where when you make commander decks, they always seem like you're making like one of like five decks in CEDH, right? So we're going to go through this, and this is the way that I've set this up. Um, this is not the way I'm purchasing this deck when I build it, because this is very much optimized with a lot of fast mana that you do not need. So again, um, you could definitely optimize this for a less costly deck that would be just as cool and just as fun. Maybe not as optimized, but you can still do the cool stuff. And I'm looking to spend like under 240 on this one, because it's not going to be what I'd call like like a power nine, you know what I mean? But this one is, I think this is. Um, so we got Elas Ilkor as the the commander with the death touch. She's a two two for a one white and a one black. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So that kind of trigger is what this whole deck is built around. And that is built around this Leonin Relic Warder here. So when Leonin Relic Warder enters the battlefield, you may exile target artifact or enchantment. When Leonin Relic Warder leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So Animate Dead is going to work with that. To, we're going to use Entomb or something, or even play Leonin Relic Warder and sacrifice it so that it ends up in our graveyard. And we're going to hit it with Animate Dead. We're going to enchant Leonin Relic Warder in our graveyard. When Animate Dead enters the battlefield, if it's on the battlefield, it loses Enchant Creature card in a graveyard and gains Enchant Creature put onto the battlefield with Animate Dead. Return Enchanted Creature card to the battlefield under your control and attach Animate Dead to it. When Animate Dead leaves the battlefield, that creature's controller sacrifices it. And the Enchanted Creature gets negative one, negative zero. And we don't really care about that because uh, we are going to sacrifice the Leon and Relic Order as many times in a, what are, let's do the math here. So let's say early on 40, 40, and 40. So 120 times, and that'll kill our table by way of our commander. Because whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So we're going to gain life, but everybody's going to be losing life from the death trigger. We have Aelie, Eternal Pilgrim. Um, sacrifice another creature, you gain life. So we're going to gain life there, Blood Artist. Or another creature dies, target player, see? Right, right. And then if we uh, ad nauseous ourselves to find these combo pieces, we can sacrifice our children to Corliss, right? Oh, we're having fun. We're getting right into it. Look at Corpse Knight, one of my favorite cards. That Tony, 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 we love it. We got uh, whenever another creature enters the battlefield in your control, each opponent loses one life. So this is real simple, right? Whenever Cruel Celebrant or another creature or Planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Um, Dowdy Vordwalker is, I love the card. Um, doesn't necessarily need to be in here, but I like it in here. So if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, instead exile it with a void counter. Sacrifice Doughty Voidwalker. Choose an exiled card an opponent owns with a void counter on it. You may play it this turn without paying its mana cost. Dranith, yes. Esper. So the usual, and there's our, there's our companion, Lurus. So each permanent card in our starting deck has mana value two or less. They do. So um, you may put it into your hand from outside the game for three as a sorcery. So basically we can pay that cost, move it to our hand, play it, and uh, once during each of your turns, you may cast a permanent spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard. And honestly, I still haven't thought if I'm going to go like all in with Loris like this. Where there are a couple of creatures like, um, you know, a couple of three mana costs I'd love to have in here. As well as Necropotence. So I may keep Loris in the deck, of course, but then not follow those companion things and just use Loris as a creature. Sarah Ascendant, very fun and important card. So it's a 6-6 six, six for one, essentially, played early. Stitcher's Supplier, we're going to be bouncing her 
Um, it's a great way to fill our graveyard. So we're certainly going to do that. Tithe Taker, um, Voice of the Blessed. Eh, we got to have some things in there. Zulaport Cutthroat is just another Elas Ilkor, Corpse Knight, Cruel Celebrant, uh, Blood Artist, essentially. So another creature you control dies. Each opponent loses one life. So going through like sorceries and stuff, I guess we'll go through that. Stuff to return stuff, so Call of the Death Dweller. Stuff's going to be entering the battlefield, returning, damn. Classic tutors. Um, again, Imperial Steel is very expensive for what it is. It's a great tutor, but it's very expensive cost-wise for what it is. Peer into the Abyss. Praetor's Grasp, sure. We like to we like to play with other people's things. Ooh, we're terrible. Return to the Ranks. This is very good. Just stuff in the Thoughtseize. It's good in any deck. Um, I don't necessarily run it um, in a lot of my black, but some I do. On Earth, of course. Return target creature card with mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. <laughs> yeah. Unmarked Grave. Search your library for a non-legendary card. Put that card into your graveyard, then shuffle. So that card can be Leon and Relic Order, right? Add Nas, sure. Angel's Grace, to save our butts with split second, you can't lose the game this turn, and your opponents can't win the game this turn. So that's going to be a very good thing for us, right? So let's get down into those instants. All right, a lot of mana production. Cabal Ritual, Calling the Weak, Dark Ritual, Deadly Dispute, um, some removal, a tutor, in Tomb, best tutors in Magic right there, half of the best tutor. Generous gifts, some removal, recursion, pretty basic stuff. It's just to fill the deck with useful things that work around. Bitter Blossoms, very good in here because once we get that on the battlefield, we're doing this for free. And we're getting those fairies for free. So that is very cool. All right. Let's uh, pop back up here. Artifacts, again, like. When I build this, I'm not going to have that in mind. I'm not going to have this. I may, I only got a couple of these, so I may not put one in here. Just because the commander's cost is so low anyways to get out. Lotus Petal will be in my deck. No. Mana Vault. Uh, I might I may put Mana Vault in there. Mox Amber I certainly will put in there. Because that's going to be good and fast with that low cost commander. Diamond, no, will not find its way in there. Maybe Mox Opal, but Skull Clamp will definitely be in there. Um, and probably a Wish Club. But uh, yeah, like with the mana base, just a basic Orzhov. So again, like let's just go over it. So these cards, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. 